It's wrong reader, it's the universe. I'm Ron Reader, and this is Ron Reader Digs the Universe, and tonight, mental health and gun massacres. Last Wednesday, 14-year-old Colt Gray killed two teachers and two students and injured nine others with his AR-15 assault rifle at Appalachie High School in Winder, Georgia. It was the 45th American school shooting this year. I'm already starting to hear in the news media talk about how Colt Gray's mental health may or may not have played a role in last week's tragic events. This is a reasonable discussion. We are in the midst of an ongoing and worsening mental health crisis in this country, juxtaposed against a culture of extreme gun availability and extreme gun glorification. Mental health likely plays a role in all gun massacres. But I also hear talk about mental health and guns from Second Amendment supporters, too. They're always adamantly opposed to any gun ownership restrictions, but are often o open to discussing mental health and guns, which they assert is the key to ending gun massacres, not gun control. Well, I don't know about that. The shooter's father, Colin Gray, is being charged by local authorities for manslaughter and second-degree murder, uh, because uh, crimes related to recklessness, because he gave his son the murder weapon while knowing that his son, who was dealing with his parents' messy divorce and who had also been researching, researching previous school shootings, was a loose cannon. Well, good. Prosecute him. Book him, Dano. But it appears that the father wasn't the only one who knew that Colt Gray was a potential threat. Last year, 2023, in May, the FBI was tipped off to online school shooting threats made by Colt Gray. They referred the case to the local sheriff's department, and, and they investigated it, but because he swore up and down that he didn't do it, that he'd been hacked, yada yada, and there was no probable cause, the police simply warned his school to monitor his behavior. And the red flags just kept flying. Colin Gray had actually been in close contact with school officials about his son's mental health and let him know that he was being bullied. Georgia Child Protective Services were in on the act, too, keeping tabs on Colt Gray's home situation. The PAs de resistance was his mother frantically trying to get the school counselor on the phone after receiving a disturbing text from him 30 minutes before he fired his first shots. Everybody who was anybody knew. Everybody knew that Colt Gray was a ticking time bomb, the police knew, Child Protective Services knew, his mother knew, his father knew, the school knew, the freaking FBI knew, but it didn't matter. It happened anyway. If we were to take seriously the right-wing assertion that tackling mental health is the only acceptable way to prevent gun mass massacres, what? should they have done differently with Colt Gray? How could they have used mental health intervention to stop the shooter from shooting? The end game with this kind of thinking is pretty grim. We would ultimately have to severely curtail civil liberties for people who we think might commit a crime. It would be a police state. Needless to say, that is unacceptable. We should pursue societal mental health improvement goals for their own sake, but using mental health as a vague panacea for gun violence is a sick joke. It's, it's just a lame distraction from a very serious national conversation about these murders. 
a deadly distraction because these school massacres will continue while we talk and do nothing. You know what I'd like to see? An assault weapons ban, like immediately, if Colt Gray didn't have such easy access to an AR-15, this massacre would not have happened. I'm Ron Reeder, and this has been Ron Reeder Digs the Universe. Join me, Ron Reeder, again next week for another episode of Ron Reeder Digs the Universe.